Hello and welcome. My name is Kathy A. And today I'm going to do a little bit of a special um, all Revlon face tutorial. But first I thought um, we'd go through a little bit of the history of the company. And then when we get back I will do a full face tutorial from start to finish. See my nails? <laughs> People don't do this anymore, right? I'm the only one on the planet still doing the, the accent nail thing. Anyway, I wanted to try both colors, and I didn't know how to mix these two, so this kind of goes with my outfit, but, well, anyway. Um, yeah, Revlon stuff is kind of interesting. I, I had uh, some treasures in this group and some real flops, so um, CVS and Ulta are going to be real mad at me because I'm taking almost everything back. Almost everything. So, anyway, before you go any further, let's watch a little bit on the history, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. The Revlon story begins with this man, Charles Revson. He was a young man in 1930 looking for a job during the Depression era. He found work as a salesman at a New Jersey factory called Elka, which made a high-quality nail enamel. It was a polish using pigments rather than dyes, like most other nail polish companies of the day. Charles got his other brother, Joseph to sell nail polishes with him and together they had the whole New York City territory. They sold to department stores and nail salons. Charles painted each of his nails a different color to show customers how it looked rather than use a color chart. He and his brother were very successful at selling nail cream, as they called it then, and wanted a larger territory but were refused, so they decided to open their own nail polish company. Charles knew that it was very lucrative to sell to nail salons, so to start the new company, he and his older brother Joseph pooled their money and came up with $300. They joined forces with a chemist from another nail polish lab who invested $300 and provided the connection to the nail polish. His name was Charles Lachman, and the company they formed used the L in his name with the Revson brothers' name to come up with Revlon. Michelle Menard was a French manicurist who actually invented nail polish in the 1920s. She was inspired by shiny car paint and she played around with varnishes until she concocted the perfect formula for an opaque nail polish. She sold the formula to Charles and Revlon and they started producing this quality formula in a variety of colors in Charles Lachman's factory. Charles watched a woman smoking a cigarette. She had bright red lipstick and the cigarette wound up with the stains on it. He thought her, her nails looked so plain next to her lips, they really needed to match. So the slogan, matching fingertips and lips, was born. Charles created a line of lipsticks and nail polishes that would go together well, so lipsticks were added to the Revlon product line. He gave them provocative names like Fatal Apple and Kissing Pink. Charles also released colors at winter and at summertime, starting the fashion craze of having seasonal colors. He was the first to do it. Nail polish remover was added, and also as a side note, uh, the popular way to do your nails in the 1940s was like this, leaving the moons or the nail beds white as well as the tips. My mother did this right up to the 1970s, drove me crazy. During wartime in the 1940s, factories were asked to produce items for our soldiers overseas to help with the war effort. So Revlon made hand grenades and dyes and manicure kits, and they won the prestigious Military E Award for their help during the war. Charles was not very well liked as a boss. He was very ruthless, but he was very ambitious for the company. He was a stickler for appearance, and he hired a top photographer to do a special glamour series for his ads. The two most famous being the Cherries in the Snow campaign, and also the Fire and Ice campaign. This started the whole concept of provocative advertising to sell cosmetics. Now here is a chart 
of classic Revlon shades you might find interesting. All of these shades came out in the 1940s and 50s and they are still in production today. Some even have matching blushes. Charles hired his younger brother Martin Revson to be the sales manager for Revlon. And in the 1950s, television was becoming quite popular, so Revlon sponsored a TV show. This was called the $64,000 Question, and it was a quiz program. Now, Martin asked for really attractive contestants if they could, so they actually, to keep them on, fed them answers so they could stay on for more weeks. This, of course, was brought to light in the Van Doren case, where it was revealed that he was given the answers to the questions which caused a Senate hearing, and it was later uh, recreated in the popular movie Quiz Show. Martin Revson also disliked one of the contestants, a young Dr. Joyce Brothers, and so he had the producers rig her questions to be all male-oriented about boxing and baseball and things that they didn't think she would know, but she actually wound up fooling them. She knew the answers. The 1960s brought a different kind of scandal, that of provocative ads, and Revlon led the way in that department. In 1966, Revlon purchased the U.S. Pharmaceutical Corporation and expanded their line to include hair products like hairspray and shampoo, hair color, and then in 1970, they bought Mitchum, and they got deodorant. And they added fragrances, such as Jean Tu and Norel. And they even had a man's fragrance called That Man, which is what Elizabeth Arden referred to Charles as, That Man. But nothing was more popular in the 1970s than Charlie. At the advent of women's lib, this strong, and very independent woman, portrayed by Shelley Hack, was used in the ad campaign so popular they actually drew a whole line of cosmetics for Charlie as well. Charlie was named for Charles, by the way. Sadly, in 1974, Charles Revson died from pancreatic cancer. Later, in 1977, a book called Fire and Ice about the Revson and the Revlon empire was written. Revlon was sold to Pantry Pride in the 1980s, and they divided Revlon into divisions, the first being for teens, the Natural Wonder division, using Debbie Gibson, a popular young artist of the time, to push the Natural Wonder products onto teens. Another division was the Princess Marcella Borghese, or Bugies division for the snooty uh, department stores, and then Revlon Moondrops lipstick for the old ladies, and Ultima II for the hip and young trendy people and makeup artists. They also came out with a pro line of products and accessories for professional hairdressers and makeup artists called Revlon Pro. Revlon also owns Almay Cosmetics, by the way, and they also, in addition to makeup, added wigs and accessories to their product line. In 1989, Revlon launched their Most Unforgettable Women in the World Wear Revlon campaign using iconic faces of the time. Also in 1989, Revlon stopped animal testing in their labs. In 1994, using models Iman, Christy Brinkley, and Cindy Crawford, Revron released its most famous uh, line, the Color Stay Lipstick and Cosmetic line, was probably the most popular of the Revlon cosmetics in history. They added a great deal more products to their cosmetic line and continue to be a driving force in drugstore makeup. They also contribute to the Look Good, Feel Better, uh, American Cancer Society program, and they've come quite a long way from their humble beginnings. Revlon's a great brand, and they certainly do still make some of the best nail polish around. Thank you, Charles Revson. Okay, 
okay, now you know uh, everything and more than you ever wanted to know about the Revlon Makeup Company. <laughs> so let's go and do um, a full face tutorial from start to finish using all Revlon products. Now they didn't have an eye primer, so I didn't use one. Um, but I am well moisturized uh, prior to using uh, the face primer and everything else, so um, I did try to give it a good chance. <laughs> so here we go. I will see you shortly. Okay. Well, here I am as the before model, waving uncomfortably long here. Let's get this started. Now I'm going to speed up the camera here. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Primer. I'm actually tapping it on lightly. I'm not really working it into my skin really hard. Um, I don't know if you can tell that from this. And I keep looking out the window at the birds. So sorry, I didn't realize how distracting that was. This is Revlon Skin Lights Illuminating Cream. This was very popular in the 1990s. I'm really happy to see it back again. I used to use this back then. It really does give a nice glow to the skin. Revlon's CC Cream, and this one is in light. To be fair, I should have done this with my hands to warm it up so it would melt into my skin better because it is very dry and hard to blend. Uh, it dries very fast and uh, I just didn't like it at all. I'm looking in my mirror now in the 5 by and I'm going through and working it into the wrinkles and dings and dents and it does seem to exaggerate those. Now here is the um, Colorstay concealer. I was hoping to do my Kim Kardashian triangle thing but it dries so fast and sets up so fast you can't really do that and blend it nicely. It does not blend well at all. And I'm just touching up a few of the places that I have redness and uh, age spots and things like that. Around the nose always gets a little red. I'm always blowing my nose. Now this is the Photo Ready Powder. And this is the lightest shade. It's called Fair. And it's actually a little dark. And I'm using the little pad that comes in it. And I stopped for a second because I can't believe how dark it is. I don't like it at all. I'm shaking my head. I'm doing my T-zone, or actually it's more of an E-zone, it looks like. <laughs> now this is the um, Colorstay Bronzing Quad. This is a matte bronzing uh, combination of four different colors. I really like this a lot. I just kind of blended all of them together to do this contouring on the side and along the bottom of my chin to try to get rid of one of, one of those double or triple chins I have. This went on very well and blended very well. I really like it. Next are the blushes. The first blush I'm going to use is the Colorstay Blush in O oh Baby Pink. It's a little bit powdery, a little bit chalky, but it makes a beautiful color on the cheeks. I'm also putting a little on what I call the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock of my eyes just to add a little bit of color to my eyelid area. This is the Revlon Cream Blush, and this is in Pinched. It's a very, very light shade, so I used it as a highlighter. And I'm doing another pass with the Skin Lights, just to add a little bit of highlight glow. And that helped a little. This quad is the Revlon Colorstay 16 Hour Eyeshadow Quad in the color Addictive. Although I didn't find it very addictive. And the 16 hour part, I think, is how long it takes to get some color out of these shades. Uh, the powder it has hardly any color payout. It's really hard to work with. This is the Revlon uh, crease brush. that You can, you can still find Revlon um, makeup brushes out there. Now I'm trying to use the mid shades uh, for the crease. They are matte, but I'm having difficulty getting any kind of payout. But it is kind of, um, there's a lot of fallout going on the edge of my eyes. So I'm getting quite exasperated. Now I'm using the little doohickey there in the dark shade, and I realize that's sticking, so I'm going to use that up in the crease a little bit. 
that seemed to do the trick. I like this speed it up feature on the uh, Movie Maker. <laughs> it's still quite a long process, it seems, though, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, an eternity later. I'm not that happy with this, but... Now, this is a cream eyeshadow quad. This is called Wild Orchid. This combination are periwinkles and pale orchid colors and one kind of dark plummy brown. I'm going to use that in the outer corner of my lid. But I found as the day wore on, that particular color wore off so fast. It was almost like an hour later. I didn't even see it there. I was so disappointed in the eye products. Now I'm using that light periwinkle on the inside to try to get some color. No, nope, not very happy. Trying the um, Photo Ready Powder in Medium Deep. It's actually a powder for women with darker skin to use, but I thought I was going to use it to contour. And then I found the bronzing palette. So um, I'm just using this as kind of a uh, eyeshadow and just doubling up on that contour and going down the decollete area conservatively. Now this eye pencil is a duo ended pencil. This is a Kajal pencil in Nile Blue Nile. The other side is kind of a creamy white color. I didn't like it when I drew it underneath my eyebrows. It looked like I, I just put a crayon up there like a, a regular Crayola crayon. It was really patchy looking. Didn't care for that at all. Now the Blue Nile side was fine. It, it went on pretty well and uh, gave me a little bit of depth in my eyes so I did like that and that did stay for a while because of the lighting it looks like I have more on uh, the left side than right side but it's just an optical illusion because the sun's so bright on the other side of my face just going back in there with that addictive quad just to kind of soften up the line under my eyes and we're going to curl with the Revlon lash curler I did actually wait about eight seconds on each side, although this is speeded up so it doesn't look like that. Now this is a new uh, mascara from Revlon. I thought it had potential. It was called 3D uh, Volume Mascara, and this is in the blackest black color. It has flakes and dings and dents all over my eye. It's sort of wet and flaky. I had flakes everywhere on my face after putting this on. I was so unhappy with this mascara and it hardly did anything at all. It just gave me a basic lash, nothing special, nothing nothing that great. Very disappointing for something new, you know. Yeah, yeah, ick. Now the nails. Since Revlon started off as a nail company, I figured I'd use two colors. This one is the Top Speed Nail Color in Superstition. That's the blue color. But the, the Top Speed part was how fast it chipped and dinged and mushed up. Now this is uh, Pink in the Afternoon Lipstick. And I really like this. Very, very pretty color. I actually am keeping this lipstick. It's very pretty. Now I took it off and I'm going to add one of the new Color Burst Matte Bombs that just came out. This is uh, Revlon's newest uh, answer to the crayon craze. And this is very matte. This is the lightest shade of pink. It's called Elusive. And still, it's a little bit dark. Very matte. Um, feels a little dry on my lips, but it does look very nice. Until you have your first cup of coffee and smear it, then it looks really bad. Now I'm adding a lip gloss, which is called Snow Pink. It's the lightest lip gloss that Revlon carries. And I'm putting it over the top of this. Gives me a little bit of moisture and actually tones down that matte kind of yuck look. So I like the combination of the two very much. going to let my hair down and there we go now the CC cream filled in um, all my wrinkles and everything it is kind of patchy looking uh, around my nose it's very kind of flaky looking so I definitely am returning the CC cream I don't like this at all um, it, it went on very very patchy too it wasn't too much fun um, 
I thought that this this was extremely dark. This fair powder it's supposed to be light fair. Uh, my favorite in this group was this bronzing powder. I think that this was really good. I really like this bronzing powder. I think that this was um, very versatile and actually you could probably use these as eyeshadows as well. So I think that this could have a duo purpose. So I'm actually not going to return this one. <laughs> but I'm going to return most everything else. Now this uh, Revlon Photo Ready uh, Cream Blush. It actually had hardly any color to it at all, so I used it kind of like a glowy highlighter. And you can see it kind of close up, but far away it probably doesn't show up very well. Now the uh, regular Revon, I think this is new, this is called Oh Baby Pink. Um, this was very powdery, but I really like the color. I think it's a very natural, uh, pretty kind of color. This particular uh, matte crayon. I found it to be very dry on my lips, but paired with, this is the lightest lip gloss, it really helped it a lot. So I'll just show you the difference. You know, it really helped it a lot to have the lip gloss over the top of it, and it was actually quite nice. Um, I liked it after that, but the, the shade on its own um, this one was very, very beautiful on. I think Revlon's lipsticks and their nail polishes, to a degree, uh, their nail polishes are very nice. Um, and this bronzing powder was nice. The Skin Lights, um, this is something they had in the 90s, I remember, and they've brought it back now. Um, it is kind of a skin illuminator, and I put it on under the CC cream because the CC cream goes on and just patches and the CC cream went on better over the top of this and there was still a little bit of illumination so I don't have completely matte face so it's not too bad um, I was very disappointed in this uh, concealer I couldn't do my you know Kim Kardashian triangle thing with it I could really just patch up you know the dark spots and blemishes with it so I was definitely um, I was eyeballing Ms. Cavalier she did uh, something with the the new concealer and I may just get that just to try it out uh, also another versatile product was the darker uh, powder of the uh, nearly naked I have the dark one for contour and the lighter one for regular but this was so dark I actually uh, couldn't use that as a regular powder they're gonna really hate me at CVS these cream eyeshadows were totally useless I put them on and they disappeared completely. If I hadn't put other things on top of them like this, um, and these shadows were very difficult to get any kind of color payout at all. So, I mean, it was total fail. Um, this eye pencil has the two colors, the dark on one end, the light on the other. Um, that's very convenient for traveling. Um, it did uh, go on very well and easy. This lighter color didn't really show up very well. Um, the lip pencil. Oh my god, I forgot to use the lip pencil. I like the lip pencil. Well, it just about does it for me. Um, I'm going to have some Russell Stover sugar-free chocolates. And this one has a map. I like it when they have a map. Uh, what am I going to have here? I think I'll try this one. Orange cream. Hmm. Sugar free. And it tastes sugar free. <laughs> it was a nice stab anyway. <laughs> so everybody have a wonderful week and of course as always have a beautiful day. Take care of toodles. Hmm.